Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 18. In this tutorial we're going to freeze time while we are inside our inventory and we're also going to get our return or exit button working correctly. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, the inventory that we have if I press play, it functions as intended. However, when we are inside it, if we click the scene view, remember it still functions like nothing else, like nothing is actually happening. We don't want this to happen because essentially it means that we can get bitten by a zombie or something can happen in the game. Usually inside a Resident Evil menu, time freezes. So we're gonna have to use a couple of lines of code to freeze time inside the menu. And everything we do in this tutorial can be done inside the inventory. So let's open that inventory script up and let's add those lines of code. Now, it is very important where you place these lines of code. When dealing with time in Unity, you can effectively freeze the game, uh, basically soft locking it up for the player. So it is important to know how the time works in Unity and where to place it. So we need to actually freeze the game when we are in the menu. We cannot freeze it, for example, here. This section here is halfway through the animation. If we were to freeze time in this section here, it would soft lock the game because we'd be stuck inside an animation that has frozen. And we can't freeze the game here because this is the way out of the menu. So we have to establish which section of the script is the most appropriate place to freeze time. And that is going to be down here. So why here? Well, all this is activating the inventory screen, turn it on and off, and then we're waiting for another quarter of a second here to uh, basically fade into the menu. Once we've faded in, that's when we can freeze it. So there is gonna be half a second delay between pausing the game and um, freezing the game. And that's generally how the Resident Evil games work anyway. If you were to play one of the old games and go to your menu, things would still move even as it was fading into the menu. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're also going to basically work with the cursor as well, because as it stands right now, I think the cursor still comes on screen when we press play. Yeah, so we wanna be able to control the cursor as well because you don't want the cursor on screen as you're trying to play. So the first thing to do is let's freeze time. So let's go to this section here. We've got if is open equals true. After can close equals true, we need to place time with a capital T dot time scale equals zero semicolon. What does this mean exactly? Well, Unity by default runs in a time scale of one. One is real time, normal speed. If we were to set this as 0 0.5, the game would run half speed. Obviously, if we would set it as two, it would run double speed. And obviously the, the higher you go, the faster the game would run. If we set it as zero, it means the game would effectively not run at all. It would freeze in position. So at this point, when we have time, dot time scale equals zero, it means the game has effectively frozen, but we're still able to do things like click on buttons, which is obviously what we're going to do. Next, we want the cursor to be visible. And I know it's visible right now. We'll sort that out as well. Uh, so we just need to put cursor dot visible equals true semicolon. Now I'm going to save this and just make sure that the game does indeed freeze inside our menu. So let's head back into Unity and let it compile. Let's press play. And everything looks good. We can see the particles move in, our players turn this head. So let's press escape to get into the menu. Let's click scene view and we should already be able to see the game has indeed frozen. So nothing can happen inside this game now while we are inside our menu. So let's now create the inverse of that to basically unfreeze the game. Now it's not as simple as just placing the opposite to this inside the else statement. You'll basically end up not in a loop, but it won't function as intended. Um, I'll show you exactly what would happen. So if we copy those two lines of code, place them in the else statement just below, change it to 
1 to reset the time scale back to 1 and cursor of visible equals false so let's resave the script and you'll see exactly why this won't work just let it compile and let's press play so we're able to freeze the game you can see it's all frozen but when we try going back we just end up stuck so it's all about where the placement of the code actually is and it cannot go in this if statement the place it goes is right here. We want the game to resume as soon as we press the cancel button or the escape button. So it's not like how we only want the time to freeze after the animation has finished. We want it to unfreeze before the animation even starts. So we need to place those two lines of code right there and save. So if we head back into Unity now, let it compile, press play, and let's go to our menu and still frozen and out the inventory and unfrozen. So if I uncouple my game view and place it side by side, you can see that's the moment the game unfreezes as soon as we press it. There. So that now works as intended. Um, do you know what? Let me just quickly check if that mouse did disappear there. So, yeah. So, okay. So the cursor doesn't quite disappear yet. We still have to work with that, but that doesn't matter too much right now. I don't want to waste too much time. Uh, that basically is something that we can deal with probably next tutorial anyway. What I want to focus on now is making the exit button that is up here in our inventory work correctly. So I want to be able to either press the escape key or click on exit. Now to do that, we have to work with some uh, UI coding. So how do we do that exactly? Well, we can actually use this section of code right here, but in a different method. So if we scroll down and let's place this method before the INV control coroutine. And it needs to be, let's say, void um, exit button. And open close bracket, open curly bracket, but this won't function as intended. So when dealing with UI buttons, the method that it calls has to be public. So in this case, public void exit button. Now what this will do is it will allow us to attach this method to the button to get the button functioning as intended. And basically what we do is whenever we press the exit button, we need to use this line of code. So if we copy those lines, place them here and save, what is effectively happening is the exit button is going to have the exact same functionality as pressing the cancel button, but without these first lines of code because they don't need to exist within this method obviously because we, there's no other way to get into the inventory without pressing the escape key there's no special on-screen ui button so let's head back into unity and how do we make it so as the button itself knows what to do well let's go to our canvas let's go to our inventory and let's click on exit button and a little further down, you'll find the button itself. And over here, where we've dealt with the color and all stuff like that previously, you'll see at the bottom it has on click, list is empty. So this is where we can assign the method. So let's click on the plus button and you'll see non object. Now you can either select the little button there and choose, but I've always found the best thing to do is drag and drop the object onto here. And I think it's menu control, isn't it? Yeah, it is menu control. So let's drag and drop that down here. And no function will light up. So we click the drop down menu, click on inventory control, which is our object we've just attached. And then you'll see exit button right there. So what this has done is this has said whenever it's been clicked, i.e. on click, we specifically run the exit button method. So let's press play and that's all good and well. And let's press escape and go into our menu and again to come out. So all of that still works, no problem. 
So now, let's press exit. Now, you can see that the cursor has indeed disappeared there. So if we go back in, you see it reappears. And if we press escape, it doesn't disappear, but it disappears when we press exit. That's just one of those little quirks that we can deal with a little later on. Now, um, I think at this point, that's pretty much how the menu is going to function within itself. And obviously, we're going to build more of that inventory the further we go into uh, development, because there is, I'm sure I mentioned it a couple of tutorials ago, that I would rather kind of adjust the inventory as and when we need to. Um, so let's just quickly make sure that we can go this way. We can still go to our inventory and resume exactly where we were. That's all good. So next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we are going to add in a pause function. Now, pausing the game and going to the inventory are going to be two completely separate things. We're going to create some extra UI and we're going to have the game actually pause rather than just going to the inventory. So it is going to be coded a little differently because we want the music to stop. We want some text to come on screen to say it's paused and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think we might also add in a font as well because I want it to look a little better than it does right now. So until that next tutorial, you just work with what you've got. Um, if you want to speed the game up for whatever reason, you want to have a bit of fun, slow it down, whatever, you know, work with that time scale. Uh, but yeah, until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.